Hey everyone, this is Joe Martin from 360Works, and you may have already seen the video we put, about, put out about Scribe 4 and the new OCR functionality. This is meant as a little companion video slash demo. We really wanted to put together a cool little example of showing how you could integrate with your scanner, a current scanner living on your network or plugged into your PC, and you could trigger the scanner from FileMaker import the file into FileMaker, use Scribe to OCR that document that you just scanned in and then store the text results into FileMaker as well. So we've got this cool scan to OCR workflow in FileMaker. Um, so let's take a look at the various components that you'll need to accomplish this. First, obviously, you'll need Scribe 4, so we'll be using that to do the OCR, and then we'll also be using that to splice and merge our PDFs. Some of the new functionality that's been added in Scribe 4 is the ability to split up or merge PDFs together. Um, the next thing we'll be using is Scanline, which is a cool little open source command line tool that we found. Uh, it's Mac only, but it allows us to integrate with scanners on our network. And then for Windows, we, um, we, ha we had to find a different tool, but we did find a, a pretty nice one. It's called NAPS2 or Not Another PDF Scanner 2. It's kind of a funny name. Uh, but that's how we're going to integrate with scanners on Windows. Uh, one one kind of one little downside here to NAPS2 is that NAPS2 requires the scanner to be plugged directly into the computer that we are uh, triggering the scanner with. So you'll need to you'll need to have that scanner sitting next to the computer or plugged right into it. Um, and you may be wondering why we're using these command line tools instead of something that has a GUI or an interface. And uh, the answer is that if something has a command line interface that we can just execute a command line uh, command and, and trigger this program or this service, that makes it a lot easier to integrate with in FileMaker or, or some other, any other program really. If we can just issue a command to the command line and trigger this program, then we're able to integrate with it. We're able to we're able to use it as part of a workflow in FileMaker, which is really our goal here. So that's why we the requirement is that we had some sort of command line hook into our scanner. Um, so scanline, you'll be able to find that on GitHub, and uh, so if you search for a uh, scan line on GitHub, you'll be able to pull that up here. And um, so this it's, it's nice that this was an open source tool that we found, it's MIT licensed, which means that you're able to just use it in production use and you, know, you don't have to pay any royalties or anything like that. Uh, and uh, so just to give you a quick little demo here, I'm just gonna run the help command to see what we get back. And, you can see that uh, we've, we've got a, a number of options here. Uh, uh, one I wanted to show you was the ability that, that, that Scanline had to actually list printers on the network. And, and there it is, that's the scanner that I'm gonna be using for our demo. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I have on the, on the network here. Um, and if, uh, if I go ahead and try to trigger it, it it's gonna fail to scan because I actually don't have any documents in there. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to load it up here in just a minute. Then for Windows, we're going to use that NAPS2 program or not another PDF scanner too. So unfortunately, we couldn't just automate the whole installation, the whole end-to-end -end process. So you will need to come and search for Google, search, search, for, search for this program here, and then come to the home page and download this. And, um, and you'll actually need to run the installer as well. And uh, the, the, the demo that we've put together expects this to be installed in the default location. So as you're running through the setup here, just, just pick all the defaults because we'll need it to be installed at this specific location right here. Um, that's, that's just what we've hard coded into our demos because that's where it's default installed. We figured that was the, kind of the easiest way to go about things. 
Um, and then once it's finished installation, you'll need to go ahead and launch the program because there's there's one more step we have to take here. Um, we don't the the command line isn't as flexible as a scan line, so we need to come in here and we actually need to set up a profile. So come to your profiles menu and a default profile should already be there, but let's go ahead and edit this, make sure that our settings are right. You might need to create this if you, if you, if you don't see it, but go ahead and choose a device. And um, I'm going to be using this HP Envy scanner. That is what's plugged directly into my PC. Um, sort of jump to the back there. Let's bring that back. And uh, there's some other options you can customize as well, such as the paper source, whether it's a like glass flatbed or a feeder tray or a duplex scanner. If that's you know, both sides, if that's, if that's the kind of scanner you have. Um, some other things you can customize are the resolution, the bit depth or the scale. Uh, so we'll save all of these settings to a profile. And then these are the settings that will be used when we trigger this scanner from the command line. Um, and so I'm not going to test it here because I want to, I, I just want to go ahead and, and show you how you'd interface with this from the command line. So first we need to locate the actual command line uh, interface, the command line executable here. Now this is the, this is the program that will actually take command line options and it's this naps2.console.exe. So if we cd into this directory, and this is actually part of, part of why we need the default installations because our demo expects this, this executable to be right here. Um, and uh, so, oh, okay, if we go ahead and run this, it's actually expecting, it's actually gonna try and initiate a scan, but it's gonna fail because we need to specify some additional options. Uh, so I've got I've got a document loaded up in the scanner, and I'm going to go ahead. I want to scan this to my desktop so I can specify an output folder. Let's just yeah, let's just scan this to my desktop. Um, okay, I can't copy it from there. So uh, I'll just need to input. Yeah, I'll put it on my C drive, and then users, and then my username and then desktop, um, and then let's execute this. So this will, uh, I don't know, you can't hear it obviously, but this, uh, my scanner is running right now. It's scanning this document and then NAPS2 is gonna take care of, um, oh, I just lost connection to my PC, here we go. Uh, Maps 2 is going to take care of getting that document from the scanner, putting it on my desktop, and it's, it's, it could be named a little bit better, but, but here we go. The concept is, is proven. We're able to scan something and, and, and get it onto our desktop through the command line, which means we can integrate with this from FileMaker, and that's kind of our whole goal. Uh, let's take a look at the help command here just to look at the other options it has. So this is, there's a number of other things it can do. Um, Naps 2, funny enough, has its own built-in OCR. So you could take a look at that. If you're on Windows, you might well, you, you could take a look at that. Um, it has this neat feature of being able to actually, uh, it'll OCR a PDF and then, and, then, and then make that PDF text highlightable and extractable. So you could actually, you could go in a, a different direction here. You could use Naps 2 to OCR a document have it have it place that text on the document itself, kind of embed the text, and then you could use Scribe to extract the text from the document. So that'd be sort of a, another another approach to this similar workflow. Um, I will say, just just sort of on a personal preference, I think Amazon has a better uh, a better OCR capabilities than the Naps2 program. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, you could check out both, see, see which one you like more. Um, so the, uh, there's another part. So of course we're, we're using all of these command line tools to integrate with our scanners and we'll need a way to execute those command, execute command line from FileMaker. 
Um, and so we put we put together this cool little execute command module that's all self-contained. You just have to feed in command line parameters to this execute command line script, and it will take care of installing the scriptmaster plugin if you need it, and then running a command and registering a function. So it's a nice little self-contained way to execute commands. Um, and of course, scriptmaster is not the only way to execute commands from FileMaker. I think a lot of people use the base elements plugin instead, and that's you could probably get going a little bit faster there. But I, I really like scriptmaster for this because of the way um, I was able to customize the the outputs here. I was able to get the exit code, the standard out, and the standard error all in one place with scriptmaster, and I thought that was really nice and really helpful for troubleshooting these sometimes troublesome external command line programs. Um, so uh, we, you know, we've got this readme here for how to use execute command line. Go ahead and take a look at that if, if you want, um, or if you don't care, I just wanted to make you aware of its existence and that it's being used as part of this demo. Um, and I think the last component here is we're using Scribe to split this scanned PDF into single pages. And uh, we're actually demoing two new functions in Scribe to get this done. The first one comes on line 12, and that's Scribe get PDF attributes. And that returns a couple of things like the author of the PDF, the MD5 hash, but what we're really, what we're really, what we really want here is the page count. How many, how many pages are in this PDF? Uh, so we're using that page count. We, we grab that page count and then we loop through all the pages. And then on line 23, you can see we're using scribe splice PDF to extract a single page from the uh, from our scanned PDF that could be a multi-page PDF. Um, so so these yeah these two functions played really nicely together here. We can get the page count with scribe get PDF attributes, and then we can loop through that number of pages and split splice it up using scribe splice PDF. Um, so yeah, that, and, and and we're using that to split up our scanned PDF here. So. Let's get this demo going. Um, and I've, I've kind of deleted all of my records so that we're starting kind of with a clean slate here. But let's go over to the lab. This is where our scanning demo gets kicked off here. And the, uh, the scanning manager um, is what we'll use. Now, I'm actually right. I'm, I'm scanning our my uh, <laughs> this the bomb defusal manual from the game, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. The game's a ton of fun if you've ever had a chance to play it. It's a game where you and a group of friends try and defuse bombs together, and it involves a lot of shouting at each other, and it's just just a, just a blast. If you ever get a chance to play it, I highly recommend it. So I've got about seven pages of this manual loaded up in my scanner, and I'm going to go ahead and trigger the scanning manager. And so I'm going to map. So I'm using this is this is using Scanline here. So I'm able to list the printers on the network and ask the user, is this the right printer? Um, and for me, there's only one, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And then I'll, I'll choose whether I want the tray or the flatbed. And like I said, I've got them loaded up in the tray. So I'll use that. And um, so this is, this, is, this is going now. Uh, you probably can't hear my scanner, but it's pulling in the pages right now. Uh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and speed this up because my scanner is really slow. And I don't want to make you guys wait for it. And we've got a, we've got a number of other steps here to go through, so I'll just kind of talk through them. First, we are going to scan all of our pages in, and we're gonna get that as a seven page PDF, and we'll pull that into FileMaker. After we've pulled that in, we're gonna use Scribe to splice that PDF into seven individual one page PDFs, and then we will send those up to Amazon to get OCR'd, each, each page will be OCR'd on its own. Um, and then we'll pull back down the results. And uh, here we go. We were able to 
scan all of these PDFs, pull back down the results, and store the text in FileMaker. So, I mean, this is really cool. We were able to start off with just a stack of paper in a scanner, pull that into FileMaker, OCR all of the pages, and then now we've got, we, we went from basically like pieces of paper to searchable text in FileMaker. Um, it's just a really cool process, and I hope you guys like it too. Uh, let us know if you have any problems or any, any, any improvements to this demo. Um, enjoy.